Today we'll proceed with uh, exploring the table and filter related functions. Uh, filter already we have explored and table functions like add columns. We have something called add columns function. Uh, using add columns function, you can add columns to the existing table. Okay. And that is uh, the reason why we use add columns. You don't have to programmatically, programmatically if you want to add columns, uh, to the existing table, you can use the calculated columns. Yes, you can uh, use add columns function. Next one is the lookup value function. Uh, before we proceed with the next uh, lookup value function, first let us explore the add columns functions. And this is the syntax for the add columns function. The first argument is your table. And second, uh, uh, you know, the argument is your name. What is the name that needs to be given to the table? See, if you create a table, obviously you need to have the columns. But if you have a, so in this case, um, if you want to create a column, you can use an expression, but you need to give some name to the expression, isn't it? So for that purpose, this is the one, uh, the second argument is, you know, I'm supposed to use name and expression. Again, another column, the, the third, uh, second column and the corresponding expression, something like that, okay? This function is not supported for use in direct query mode when used in calculated columns. So this is the one you need to remember it. The interview they'll ask you, can you tell me which all DAX functions that you cannot use it with direct query mode? Um, right, so the calculated columns, when you use it, uh, add columns, it will not work. And the row level security rules, in case of any row level security rules have been defined for a specific table, in that kind of situation, you cannot use add columns function. Mm, here, Next one is we will jump into the Power BI desktop and we will take a look at, uh, you know, here. So here I'm going to rename this page as um, add columns. Anyway, this is the one is going to return a table. In this case, um, we are not going to use any visual here. So all I do is I just go to the data view. And then here. the data view, we will uh, use uh, the add uh, column function, okay? And in this case, uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to create a new table, new table, okay? Uh, here, click on the new table. So we have something called calendar auto function. Okay, the calendar auto function, I'm going to use that as a first argument to this one. Okay, what is calendar auto function? By default, this function, the calendar auto function will scan all tables in our model to find the minimum and maximum date values and generate a date sequence covering this range. Okay, let's wait for some time. It is still opening it. Okay, here I'm going to say the add columns. Actually, it's a date table. Okay, date table, you can use add columns. It is pretty simple one. Right? So add columns here, I'm going to say the calendar auto function. In the interview, they'll ask you, what is the difference between calendar function and calendar auto function? Remember that the calendar auto function by default it goes and checks the minimum and maximum date uh, values that are available in your model. So what do you mean by model? I have 10 tables are there. It goes and checks which all tables have date columns in it. Of all those um, tables date column, it goes and checks which tables date column has a minimum date, which table uh, date column has the which tables, which date column has the maximum date value in it. 
So it takes care of it automatically. Okay, it goes and checks automatically the calendar auto. Even the calendar auto function returns a table with a single column called a date, which contains a contiguous or the continuous uh, set of dates in it. Okay, that is what your calendar auto function uh, does. And now uh, I just um, press enter, alt and press enter. Go to the next line. And here, don't write everything in a single line, okay? So you need to um, make sure that your script can, you know, your script is more readable. So first, what I do is I'm going to use the month. I'm going to create a column by the name of month. The format is I'm going to use a date column. So what is this date column? This date column, so the moment when you specify calendar auto, it will return a table with a single column called date. Okay. So this date, uh, from this date, you extract month. Okay. And um, format a date. And then I'm going to say yum, 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 something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to close this function. The format is a function. Similarly, we are going to extract the year. Year from the date column that was returned by my calendar auto function next one is the quarter and here the format sorry here we I put star mistakenly and format is a function and so you need to use the close one and here I'm going to use uh, the up to this, I'm going to copy paste it. And since it's a quarter, I'm going to say uh, forward slash QQ. Okay. So in that case, uh, if it is Q1, uh, Q2, it will display Q1, Q2 and all. Okay. Along with the Q. So the one, two, three quarter is usually when you use the simple quarter function, it will return, uh, it will go and check the current date falls in which quarter. If it is falling in first quarter, it will return one. But uh, instead of returning one, two, three, I want to prefix that with uh, Q, right? So for that purpose, I'm going to use forward slash Q and then Q. Okay, this Q will return, the second Q will return one, two, three. So concatenate that with uh, this Q so that the output will be Q1, Q2, Q3. And the next one is the month um, number, comma, uh, month of, the date function okay this is correct this closed parenthesis is matching with this open parenthesis fine i'm going to click on the tick mark so that this dash query will get executed in this case you will find a table by the name of add column state table in that table uh, you will find these four columns. So in the add columns function takes the first argument as a table. Then why did we specify calendar auto? Even the calendar auto function returns a table. In addition, it returns a table with a single column called date. Okay. So hence, um, you know, since this function returns a table, so I'm going to use this uh, argument for your add columns. And uh, the, that's all. So uh, the color auto returns a date column. From this date column, extract month, year, quarter. So instead of clicking on new column, new column, right? So you can use programmatic one single script. You can create, you know, as many columns as you want it as part of your calendar table. Got it? Okay, fine. So I'm going to, you know, this has been done. Our add columns date table got ready. It is ready now. So this is how you can use uh, the add columns function. The add columns function, not only we can use it with the date uh, thing, even in your existing, uh, for example, sales W04, if you want to add additional column. So the first argument is supposed to your table name, sales underscore W04. And if you have any column, right? So for example, here you wanted to have the sales amount, comma, quantity into price. This is your expression. The expression you can say quantity into price, okay? so that uh, the new column will get created.
Hope you understood uh, what is uh, the add columns function and uh, how you can use it in the real world scenario. You can use it like this, okay? Next one is the lookup value function. The lookup value function, okay? So the lookup value function is pretty straightforward. If you have used the Excel, right? In the Excel, uh, there is something called lookup function, right? The lookup function, how it works, the same way it works. And if you see this example here, Unit price is equivalent to lookup value, product you know, unit price, and all the things. You can see three arguments: unit price, product key, and product key. For example, you are working with a fact table, sales fact table. In the fact table, you will not find the cost price uh, of the product, right? So what you do is from the sales fact table, uh, it goes and you know, let's say you, know, you are picking up the product key, and then you do a lookup on this product table's product key. And then the corresponding unit price will be picked up by doing the lookup value. So by using lookup value function, the advantage is you don't have to create a relationship between the tables. Without the relationship between the table itself, this function will work. Okay, and uh, I just uh, go and show you the other one. Let me see. Yeah, uh, here I have used the fact sales. <clears throat> so this is the sales fact table. In the fact table, you will have the product ID and the list price, list price, selling price, and quantity sales amount, but you don't have the cost price in it. The cost price is available in your product dimension table. Look here, the cost price. So in that case, uh, how can I include the cost price here? Look here, here, I have done it already. Let me see if this is the column that I got it directly or... I think this value already I put it here. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to replace this as one here. I'm going to create a new column. New column, why the new column is not getting created? Okay, this is your new column. And here, uh, let me do what, yeah, in this case, I just say the cost price is equivalent to lookup value function, lookup value function. Look here, the result, what you wanted to return it from the product table, I want to get the your unit price, the cost price. So the cost price, look at dim product. From the product dimension table, get the product price for each um, record or each transaction's corresponding product ID. So in this case, I need to tell the product um, product ID in your product dimension table, comma, here I'm going to use uh, the fact sales table product ID. That's all. Look here in this table. In this table, we don't have the uh, cost price. Forget about the one which I already shown you. Okay, you just assume that there are no cost price column is there. And in this case, what happens? I want to uh, get the product price from the product dimension table by sending this product ID, each and every row's product ID, I want to send it to the product dimension table's product ID column so that the corresponding P01 in the product ID table, what is the cost price? You return it. So in the fact sales, you need to, uh, you know, you, you need to in the fact sales, you need to specify which column you want to pass it to the product dimension table in order to look up the product ID, the corresponding product ID. So here, what we are doing is, uh, what we are saying here is, hey, you take the product ID column in this column, whatever value is there, row by row, right? You can send it to 
you can go and check it in the product dimension tables, product ID column. If it is there, go and pick up the corresponding cost price from the product dimension. That's it, guys. This is how the lookup value function works. And here, you don't, you don't need to have the relationship uh, created between the tables or amongst the tables. It will still work, the lookup value function. Without the relationship, underlying table relationship is uh, this one works. Okay, so that is what the look here. I just should go back here, look up value. So you just click on the cost price, you will find the uh, formula that I used it here, look up value function. Okay, and then uh, the next one is the related function. We have something called related and related table. Related and related table. Uh, in this case, uh, this function, the DAX function related takes a single column. Okay, that is related to the current row. Okay, a single value that is related to the current row will be written by the related table. This is similar to your Excel, uh, you know, a lookup value function. Uh, but uh, the related, it can draw value from the one to one or one side to the many side. The same thing, whatever we did using the lookup value function, you can achieve the same thing using related function. But in the case of related function, you don't have to specify this many number of uh, arguments. Okay, I'll just show you uh, how to use related. I'm going to click on the new column. Ah. Here I'm going to say related cost price. Just for our understanding, I'm using a related card. Don't use this kind of naming convention, the real world scenario, the related. We have something called related function, only one column. So product ID from your product, sorry, your uh, product ID. Mm. In this case, uh, the yeah, you need to use the product ID table only here. Because yeah, product ID, okay. And here I'm going to say product, product ID, okay. So in this case, it is implicitly understood. Currently we are in the sales fact table or fact sales table. And what you do is you pick up the product ID from each and every table of this fact table and then do a lookup in this one. And then give me the price here, okay. The cost price, okay. In this case, um, okay, let me do one thing. The related, okay. I just press enter. No, it will it will do a lookup on that column. It will not return the cost price. We need to specify the cost price there. Yeah, instead it returns the product ID. We don't need the product ID. See here, our job is pretty simple. What we want to return from here, unit price. Sorry, the cost price. That's all, guys. So we don't have to specify explicitly, hey, in this table, you take the product ID column and go and do a lookup in this uh, product dimension tables, um, um, tables uh, product ID column. Okay, you don't have to explicitly tell it. So in this case, it goes and picks up automatically. Product dimension, obviously the product ID is the key column here, that key column. And then in this table, product ID column, it will go and check automatically. If it is there, it is going to return the cost price. So this uh, syntax wise, this is very, very simple, isn't it? Okay, next one is the related table function. Related table function. The related table function takes the table name as an argument. The related table takes a table name as an argument. For example, if I go to the product dimension table, and if I click on the cost price here, uh, okay, here it is not giving a product dimension and cost price okay here i'm going to use something like a new column i'm going to create a new column the cost price comes with this data set itself it has got nothing to do with this one anyhow we will go and check okay here i'm going to say uh, number of transactions. 
this is a one side table because it's a dimension table, right? Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use count x function, related table, and then fact saves. Yes. So what I need is in the fact sales, tell me how many number of uh, rows are there for each um, record. Okay, here the two few arguments to the related table. Um, okay, okay, here you need to specify, since we are using context, you need to specify the table name. Followed by that, you need to specify the, okay, here if I say, how come it will work, right? So here I'm going to say, um, yeah, we can say this way, it's a count row, sorry, not count x, count rows. Count rows is the one will give you the, you remember as part of the count family of function, we discussed about the count rows function. The count rows function gives me how many number of records are there in fact cells in relation to the product ID in this product dimension table. So product ID P001, you know, we can see that we sold it in two different transactions. And if you see X, the P003, we sold it in 15 different transactions in the fact sales table. So this is your transaction file which, table, which one is the fact sales, whereas the product dimension is a lookup table. Uh, this is a one side table. This is a many side. So many side, to one side, you can do it with, you can pull the data from many side to one side uh, in the case of product dimension table. In the case of um, sales fact table, you can pull the, uh, you can pull the one side data to the many, one to many, here many to one. Okay, so that is what it tells. Um, it returns a table of values and changes the content which the data to evaluate the experience in the new content that has been specified and existing yeah this this works with the many side okay many to one look here the related function which works with one one side to many and this one is the opposite many side to one side which one the related table are you able to follow me i think 